Smith and D.T. Ward after I had uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo at the Nixon Library two weeks ago. And in it, I discovered the white paper on China's space activities in 2016, which includes the admonition to explore the vast cosmos, develop the space industry, and build China into a space power is a dream we pursue unremittingly. Now, it's always that sort of communist, arcane way of stating things. But Xi Jinping's China dream certainly has a lot focused on space. When did we become aware of their ambitions above this above the skies we've been aware of it for at least 30 years and it has uh if you read back to his early days he has seen technology and the power technology has to change fate and to change national power and world power uh from the early days so those of us that have been paying attention have known this for a long time it's just hard for the american people to focus on something uh, when there's no imminent danger. Well, we had the Sputnik moment, right? And and everyone knew at that moment, we've got to do something. And we're kind of having a China moment right now. I mean, the president gave TikTok and WeChat 45 days to get out of the country, basically. Uh, so we, we are in a China moment. But does that China moment understand, and maybe you can help us understand, what are they doing up there that has us alarmed? Well, it's what they're doing as a whole of society that ha- should have us alarmed. Um, and it's not that it's, there's anything wrong with what they're doing. It's the Communist Party and its ability and its propensity to control other people and other governments that really has us concerned. So they're building an industrial base. They're building an infrastructure in space that will deliver power, transportation, energy, information and manufacturing it it would be as if uh they are building a navy and 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 a merchant marine in space and we are not i i was told by dr ward they actually think about mining on the moon and i i you know it's not something americans really think of outside of science fiction but they are thinking about it in practical terms true or false True, and uh, and we should be as well. But it's also um, asteroids. I mean, there is it's as if there's a continent three times the size of Africa that is only three days away, and China is the only one that's meaningfully trying to use that valuable resource for their own economic benefit. Um, and uh, Americans, some Americans think about this and they talk about it. We have ro- robotics right now. Uh, that are mining in Africa that could be mining on the moon. Uh, the, the trick now is to do it responsibly, to do it without destroying anything, but to do it to benefit humankind. Have people thought about the sovereignty issues here, General? I mean, we were first there, but we didn't claim it for the United States. We planted the flag. I, I just, I'm curious, what are the sovereignty issues if if Elon Musk gets this going and suddenly we've got robotics on space command going up there to explore what kind of rare earth minerals are actually rare moon minerals what happens well see this is why this is so important and why many have written about this Uh, the legal precedent for this question you're asking um um, you can trace it back and and, but the reality is that uh, there is this idea that if somebody puts the sweat equity and takes the economic risk to do something meaningful, they should be able to maintain some profitability because of that risk and that effort. And there's also the idea that if you're somewhere first and doing something that you, you know, the squatter's right, if you will, that uh, you, you have some right to that resource. The real problem though, is that when you go into this area, whoever gets there first sets the rules. And if you have the rules set by China, you're going to have the rules we see being abided by in the South China Sea or by the Uyghurs or by the Tibetans. Uh, This this idea that China's way or the highway, and if they don't like what you're doing, they can steal it, they can kill you, they can imprison you, they can enslave you, and that's just fine with them. So, General Quast, when you say robotics to exploit rare moon um, minerals, what does that look like? When you imagine it for our radio audience who are, you know, we got Steelers fans listening, General. They're not going to pick up on this. Uh, what's it look like? 
Well, there are companies out there today, and uh, I know many of their CEOs that um, are visionaries. And just like you had Rockefeller and Carnegie and uh, Ford, who understood how technology could help human beings do things they otherwise could not do, like the automobile, for example, the Wright brothers and the airplane. There are leaders out there in industry that are building robotics, both small and big, uh, that can do the work of benefiting from the resources of the moon and the asteroid. And they are using the Earth as their experimentation and prototyping environment. And they're out there mining right now. So just imagine uh, a little toy that can dig into the ground and find gold or silver or platinum or whatever rare earth element you might need and bring it back to the surface. That's what they do. Does that involve, you know, we just saw SpaceX successfully return to astronauts. I'm sure you watched that with great oh, yeah. interest, General. Uh, does that portend private companies dispatching their own fleet of vehicles to the moon's surface to see what they may find? Yes. Um, you know, the analysis and the, the research done on this is that there is a multi-trillion dollar business in space for anybody who is willing to take the risk and build the technology to tap into that resource well. And whenever you have that kind of wealth sitting out there, uh, private entrepreneurs will go after it, and they are. And so what you saw, most Americans didn't know what they were looking at when they saw Elon Musk help NASA do that and take those guys to the, to the International Space Station. What you're watching is the, the very first aviation-like access to space, meaning for the first time ever, uh, you can take a vehicle to space and land it back here, refuel it, and take it back to space again. Since the beginning of the space race, you had to burn up the rocket. It would be like driving your car to work, and you had to burn your car to the ground and buy a new car to come back home. That's how we've gone to space since the 1960s, and now we can drive the same car back home. It makes it so much cheaper, and it's going to change transportation modalities like this. A new way of transportation that's cheaper it's going to change everything, just like the automobile changed everything. Yeah, General, you're getting through to me in a way. I like, you know, it, it reminded me of my child. I'm older than you. When they would wheel the TV in and we'd watch launch and then we'd watch the, the capsule. I know Buzz. I've met Alan Cooper. I know these people that had walked on the moon. So there was a, 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 a an image there. But you're saying last week was actually bigger than I thought. Uh, I thought it was, oh, good, we're doing it again. And I think most Americans, oh, good, we're doing it again. But it's different. We're doing something different. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. And uh, it, 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 it's hard to see because most Americans just see the rocket going up and they cheer and uh, it looks like the same old. But it is as if you saw the very first automobile or you saw the very first airplane. Uh, those were vis visually and viscerally different enough that Ameri that people understood that an airplane was something different, and this is going to change fate. Uh, that's what you watched with Elon Musk. It just is such a different uh, thing that most people assumed it was the same. You're, you're ranking him with the Wright brother. I mean, that's a big deal. Uh, you're, you're reframing this for me. Um, are you, uh, do you? Do you think he's a genius? Oh, I do. There's no question about it. Rockefeller was a genius. I mean, there's a lot of sure. geniuses in the past. Tesla was a genius. Uh, and there's a reason why uh, Elon Musk uh, you know, called his car company Tesla. It, it's about the idea of a genius that understands how technology can change world power. And, it can, and so it can change world power for the good or the bad. And this is why so many of us have been talking for over 30 years about the need for America to wake up. Because nations fail and civilizations crumble for a lack of vision. And right now, America is suffering from a lack of vision. And that vision is that we are fighting amongst ourselves because people you know, will do something with their energy. And so we're tearing ourselves apart as a country here when there is a vision sitting out there that could uplift our economy. America could lead into space. And we set the rules where freedom and the respect for people and the respect for Mother Earth are that rule set. And we make a trillion, we tap into a trillion dollar market and we have millions of jobs for Americans. That's the vision we could be ushering in. But instead, we're fighting amongst ourselves politically, tearing each other apart while China is growing strong and doing that vision.
Lieutenant General Steve Quash, retired U.S. Air Force. That's one of the most uplifting segments I've done in a long time. Thank you, General. Have a great weekend.